So today I actually wanted to talk to you about some things that you really need to do um, before you start planning your 2017, because I know that everybody people are raring and ready to go in their 2017 post-it note frenzy on all planners. And, um, and I just really wanted to talk to you about some key things that I think are really important before you actually crack into your planning. Say hi. <laughs> Good to have you guys joining. So the first thing is take stock. So really, you know, not just generally how, how do I feel about how 2016 went, like I want you to dive in really deep and think about, you know, when were busy times for me during the year? Is there seasonality in my business? Uh, you know, was there some seasonality in my business? What products and services did really well? What did I feel truly aligned to this year that I was providing to my clients and what was my zone of genius and what made money for me? So I'd really encourage you, if you haven't already done it, and if you have done it, then let me know. I'm really keen to hear if others have done it, is to sit down, and I did this at the end of December, is that I listed out kind of all of the different events that we had run, the different products and services that we had provided, um, you know, what what was making money for me, what wasn't making money, how did I feel against all of those different things um, and where was I my happiest and really in my flow where I was really feeling like this is what I wanted to be doing. So really think about that and, and sit down and actually note these things out because I think that it will really help you with your planning for 2017 as to where you want to be focusing and where you want to be putting your effort into things that are going to make you feel really great but also have a financial up for you on those sorts of things as well. So the first thing is, is to really take stock and go through things with a fine tooth comb. The next thing is what weren't great times for you. And I think sometimes we, you know, we do focus on the negative a lot, but I'd really love to encourage you to focus on maybe things that weren't going so well, but why? You know, not just how you were feeling, but what was it that didn't quite resonate for you? What was it that you did where you kind of go, yeah, I thought that was going to work, but it didn't really. Well, why didn't it really? Was it the time that you had to invest in it? Was it the money that you invested it? Was it your ability to deliver on the things that you really wanted to? Was it the engagement that you got? So when you're looking at things that maybe didn't go so well in the year, don't just kind of go, oh, that was all crap and I hated it and it didn't work. I'd really encourage you to go through and take a look at, you know, what that was for you and, and why it didn't quite work. Because I think knowing what doesn't work is just as important as knowing what does work. So that when you go into 2017 or now that we're in 2017, you can kind of say, you know something, this type of work isn't for me. And even though I tried it and I wanted it to work, that's just not something I'm going to continue to do. And this is another big thing, giving yourself permission to say no to things that you thought were going to be amazing. And I've had that this year as well, you know, in the last year as well, where I tried a few different things and I thought, yeah, this is definitely the way that I want to go and this is what I want to do. And when I did a review of it, I was like, you know, something that doesn't really light me up and it's not really something that... I want to be focusing on in the new year as well. So I think really giving yourself permission to review that honestly and take a look at why things haven't worked so that you can make a really informed decision moving forward is going to be really key. The third thing is know your business inside out. So if I was to say to you, how much does it cost to run your business every month? Can you tell me that figure? Is that a figure that you know? And I'm talking about things like your email management, marketing, social media, tech platforms, training, memberships, etc. Once again, I sat at the end of last year um, and had all of that in my spreadsheet and I've got my zero, etc. And really looking at <clears throat> where I was spending money. Zero is so great as well for things like 
I know how much I'm spending on Facebook advertising. I know how much I'm spending on um, tech platforms, on support in my business. So I was looking at what my staffing costs were as well as what my tech costs were as well as what my advertising costs were. So really look at that so that you can kind of say, okay, well, you know, especially if you want to play a bigger game this year, then last year I spent $1,000 on advertising. This year I'm going to allocate $3,000 over the course of the year or $5,000 or whatever it is towards that. So really knowing your business inside out can then really help you make informed decisions for this year on where you need to spend more money or where you need to shift the allocation of resources, time, money, etc., so that you can definitely execute on the things that you really, really want to. So do definitely take the time to know your business and know the figures in your business. I always say, and if you've watched me before, you know, you're, you know, run your business like a business and not like a self-validation tool. It's about you really understanding the numbers and working towards that. The fourth thing is, which is so important, who were the people that made you feel happy in 2016? Who were the people that lifted you up, that encouraged you, the people that really pushed you to be better, the people that just supported you fully? You know, and where did you meet them and when do you see them and what was it about them that just made them such a great energy to be around? And, you know, this year, really make time to continue to be in those groups and with those people and connected and having conversations because, you know, the people around you will contribute massively to the energy that you bring to your business this year as well. And obviously, we've got to be self-motivated and we've got to be able to, you know, execute on the things we want to execute on. But, you know, the people that we surround ourselves with, as we always say, is so important. So put that in as part of your review of last year and put it in as far as your planning for next year. Who do I want to be more around? And be really deliberate in the friendships that you've built. It's quite funny. I kind of think there's a couple of people who I'm just like, I really want to make sure that I'm trying to build friendships with them because when I'm around them and when I have really great conversations with them, then I feel so much better and I know that I'm working better and I'm being more productive and I'm being more positive, etc. because the time we spend is so good. So think about that as well. So who are the people that made you feel great? Glad to watch the whole video. Thanks, Belinda. Nice to have you here. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the fifth thing as well is what clients made your day? So where did those clients come from? What channels did they come from? Because if you're finding that you've got really good clients coming from a certain place, whether it be Facebook groups or networking groups, then going back to those things are hopefully going to mean that you're going to be finding more like-minded people who you can then continue to connect with as well. So really take a look at the clients that really lit you up where they come, came from, and what made them great clients as well. And I know we talk about our, our ideal client all the time, um, but I also think that the more you go through this process, the more you really identify. I loved working with somebody like that because they were doers, they were action takers, that's my kind of ideal client, um, and they were really positive. They did what you know we said that they were going to do, and they absolutely killed it. And I've had a couple of clients last year where I was just – so excited by what they did and the game that they played and how they really took their business to a new level. And so they're the kind of people that I want to continue to seek out um, and make sure that I'm working with as well. And the other thing is, is that if you worked with people that didn't light you up, then what was it about them, you know, said that when you're doing discovery calls or you're looking at taking on new clients, what is it that you might be kind of avoiding because it's a lesson learnt from 2016 that they may not be your people and they may not be the people that maybe you're going to be able to help or that, you know, allow you to do your best work as well. And then the sixth thing and the last thing, which is what I'm all about if you, are, if you don't know me already, is how can you play a bigger game in business this year? Yeah, so when we talk about review of 2016, really go deep and really take a look at what did you do 
what could you have done that you didn't do that you wish you had done last year and how can you put that into your planning for 2017? So, for example, for me, I know that even though I was quite visible last year, I had so much on my plate that I didn't play as big a game as I would have liked to because I didn't have the time. So this year I've actually culled a number of, number of things from my business, which means that I can focus on really doing the work that I want to do and putting myself out there in a way that I want to put myself out there, channeling revenue and resources into playing that bigger game. So really take a look at what you wish you had done more in 2016 and then plan to do more of that in 2017. But it's only through the review of what we've done before um, and what works and what doesn't that allows us to really plan with, um, you know, with, I guess, reflection what we want to do coming into the new year. So as you go into your 2017 planning, if you may have already done it, um, I would really encourage you to use your 2016 review and all of the things that I've just talked about to take a look at how you can play a bigger game, be more focused, work with the better clients, surround yourself with better people and really do the work that you want to be doing.